Hi, welcome back to Happy Epicor Homestead. Today we're going to talk about purslane. Some people say purslane. I don't know. I think they're both right. Anyway, I'm going to tell you about this. I'm going to tell you how to preserve it and I'm going to tell you what it's good for. So first I'm going to show it to you. I will put in a close-up photo. But that's what it looks like. Purslane is a low-growing annual. It's a succulent. It spreads like crazy, like a ground cover. It will reseed itself. So if you grow it in your garden and you don't want it there, then make sure you, when you harvest it, you pull it all up um, before it flowers. This one has just started to flower. Some people say you should harvest it about two months after you grow it from seed. I can tell you right now from experience, it does not grow well in pots. I grew, I grew this from seed. I mean, this is not even, not even half of what I have out there. And if you saw my, uh, my June garden update, they were like so we, but once I put them in the ground, they just exploded and it was amazing. And I'm super excited about that. So I recommend that you start them from seed in pots, but then transplant them into the ground and they'll just go wild. If you want to have it year after year, you can plant it in a place where it can reseed itself because it will, unless you pull it up by the roots. Another pretty cool thing about purslane is that once it does go in the ground, it's really drought resistant. I mean, being a succulent like it is, you don't even have to water it. You don't have to fertilize it. And it has some really amazing health benefits. And we're gonna get into those in just a minute. Something really great to know about this plant is it has five times as much omega-3s as spinach. So if you're vegan, this is a really good option for you to get your omega-3s. Purslane is also high in potassium and magnesium, and it's also a laxative, so just be careful how much of it you choose to use. This can be eaten raw on salads. Uh, it has a really mild flavor, and um, it just tastes nice and fresh, but you're probably not gonna wanna eat like a whole purslane salad. Otherwise, well, I mean, maybe you will, like if you really gotta go. Otherwise, yeah, that's what will happen. Now I'm gonna tell you the two ways that I preserve this. I do both a tincture and an oil infusion, which I then will turn into a salve. So to do a tincture, you'll take You'll wash this, right? Go ahead and rinse it off, get the bugs off and whatnot. And then you'll take a jar, any jar, fill it halfway full of clean, chopped, fresh herb, not dried, okay? You wanna use the fresh herb. And then you'll fill the jar all the way to the top with 100 proof vodka. You'll leave it in the jar in a cool, dark place for six weeks, and then you'll strain it and store it in a dark colored jar again in a cool and dry place. The secondary way to use this is to dry it. I use a dehydrator. You can dry it however you want. It's a succulent, so if you're gonna air dry, it might take a while. Um, but I'm gonna use the dehydrator, I always do. Uh, I run the dehydrator super low, like 95 degrees. It's basically warm air that's just blowing around the herbs. I do that for all of my herbs, because we're not trying to cook them. Right? We're just trying to dry them out, maybe faster than six months. Okay. I, I just know, like, if some of my close people watch this, they're like, Tara, you exaggerate so much. Yeah, kind of, a little bit, sometimes. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> so to make the oil infusion, you'll dehydrate it however you want. And then again, you'll fill your jar halfway full with the dried herb. Oil infusions must always have a dried herb. Oil and water do not mix. If you put a fresh herb in here and oil, then you have oil and water. Not good. 
it will just mold, it will go rancid, it will be sad, you'll waste your time and your resources if you do that. So dry your herb, halfway full, and then oh, about inch and a half, two inches from the top, you'll fill it up with the oil. The reason why is because the oil tends to leak out a little bit um, while it's in the hot box and I mean, that's just messy and it's just not necessary as well. The herb has to be covered, obviously, which is why you put the herb halfway, put the oil up the rest of the way, two inches or so, like from the top. I use what I call a hot box. Um, I know if you've seen my original Comfrey Salve uh, video, I don't do, uh, I don't do oil infusions that way anymore. This makes, um, <laughs> this just makes it so much stronger. So what you're going to want to do is what I just told you and then put it in, in a hot box. Keep it out of the sunlight. You guys, I know there are some herbalists out there that tell you, oh, stick it in the sun. No, please don't stick it in the sun. Instead, get a seed mat, stick it in a, like I use a storage, like a little, like a storage bin from Costco, you know, the ones with the yellow lid. Love those. Totally love those. Anyway, I put a seed mat down there and I put these on top and it keeps them nice and warm and I leave them in there for six weeks. And just like with the tincture, also left for six weeks and you shake, shake, shake every day. Same thing with the oil infusion. After the six weeks, both with the tincture and with the oil infusion, then you will strain out the plant matter and put it in a dark colored bottle. You can use big bottles, small bottles, doesn't matter. If you only have this much purslane, then use a little tiny jar. That's okay, that's fine. You don't have to use big scale like, like I do. Now that we know how to preserve this herb, after we've harvested it, let's talk about what it's good for. We're gonna touch on the oil infusion first. I use an oil infusion to make a salve. A salve is basically the um, herbal oil infusion mixed with beeswax. A purslane oil infusion with beeswax is amazing for psoriasis. So we know that folks that suffer from psoriasis are on some heavy duty pharmaceuticals. It is a disease that can just wreck your life um, ruin your self-confidence and this salve will help heal that psoriasis, help heal the scaly skin and just beat down that inflammation that is causing the symptoms. And that's what we want, right? Especially for those of us who have, I, I don't have psoriasis, but I have, you know, a beloved family member, actually two that do and you know it's on their arms or on their face and you know it can really make you feel self-conscious when you're dealing with that type of a rash in a visible area on your body so this salve will really help psoriasis that's the number one thing that the salve can do but it's also good for other things because it's anti-inflammatory it's good for all kinds of rashes not just psoriasis it's also good for um, bites and stings from insects and bugs well insects and bugs are the same thing right okay whatever bugs you get bit by a bug then you want to use the salve on that. It will help reduce that inflammation. It's also good for hemorrhoids because, I mean, I feel like all of these things that I've been making lately are good for hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids, you guys, if you don't have them, I hope you never get them because they're uncomfortable. If you've ever had a baby, I know some of you watching this have had children and you got hemorrhoids and you don't want anybody to know, get some of this, okay? It's gonna help you, I promise. But if you don't have hemorrhoids, but you still want to use this, it can be so amazing for tightening the skin on your face. It's just great at lifting and toning the skin. It can be used in a face mask. I love that about Purslane and I'm really excited to use it, you know, cause your girl is not getting any younger. <laughs> Now that we've covered what the salve is good for, let's talk about the tincture. The tincture, 
I mean, I, I love the salve. It has its purpose. Um, I think the psoriasis healing is kind of a big deal, but the tincture has completely different health benefits. The tincture is not going to help you so much with the psoriasis, but the tincture is like, uh, the porcelain tincture is like a full body cleansing type of an herb. As I mentioned earlier, not only is this a laxative, which, well, you know, like I said, be careful how much you consume. It also removes free radicals, removes carcinogens, and kills and removes intestinal worms. So, I mean, what's more cleansing than that, right? So if you have any of those issues, I would definitely recommend that you look into using this. Like I always say, start small. Start with one drop and work your way up to one to three dropper fulls three times a day. Try to use it on a short-term basis and always do consult your doctor or your naturopath because if you have intestinal worms, you know, you might need a little bit of, you know, extra assistance such as a binder like charcoal to uh, add to this regimen. That said, I can't give you every single dosage on this short little video just to kind of get you inspired about this herb. But there are, you know, trusted people that you can consult um, or you can message me and we can have a conversation about it. But I'm not going to give just like universal instructions on how to use this for really serious ailments. Not because it won't work. It will work, but I just, I, I, I'm not in your body and I don't know your situation. I don't know what your diet's like. I don't know what your lifestyle is like. And you know, there's things that happen in our lives that impact our health, like abuse in the home or um, an eating disorder or, um, you know, just like your water supply. There's like so many different considerations to take into account that I just can't sit here and like give you medical advice. So I can't give you medical advice, but I can tell you what this herb is good for. And with that said, I just want to list off a couple of other things that this tincture is really good for. It can help you lower your cholesterol, of course, you know, if you, um, you know, kind of change your diet a little bit, this will be more effective, but even without, um, this will assist you. And this, uh, tincture is antifungal. It's also antioxidant and antibacterial. Something else that's pretty cool about this herb is it's an antidepressant. I do recommend that if you don't have any um, issues with um, alcoholism that you try this tincture for um, any depression issues that you might have and you might want to consider now even though I don't make a tea there's no reason why you can't dry it you know like as if you were gonna make um, your oil infusion and make a tea out of it for anti-depression effects another super cool thing which is probably related to its antidepressant qualities is it has the ability to counteract the effects of caffeine. So, you know, let's just say you went to the store and got a highball and you're like, oh, oh, that was too much for me. Now I've got the jitters. You can take some of the purslane tincture and it will calm down and counteract the effects of the caffeine. And the last two things that I wanted to share about the purslane tincture is you can use it uh, as a spray into your mouth to um, just kind of aid and improve your mouth health. So, you know, it's good for your teeth. It's really good for your gums and I highly recommend it. You can just, once your tincture is done, you can just, you know, just spritz it in there and you know, keep those teeth and gums looking and feeling really good. And some studies have shown that this herb is really good in dealing with fungal infections and gastric tumors. So I highly recommend that you have this herb in your medicine cabinet, if at all possible. I know it grows really great here in zone 8B. That's where I'm at. 
Um, I haven't really done any research on where else it grows. I just know it grows well here. I'm kind of thinking it, I mean, it's a succulent, so probably grows well almost everywhere except for some of those really, really cold climates. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I hope this inspires you to, you know, think about maybe growing some of your own herbs and preserving them. It's really pretty easy. I mean, if you have the time, I know that's kind of half the battle, right? Like I'm in a unique position where I do have the time to do it. And I really love to share how and why with you. Um, and as most of you know, at least as of the filming of this video, I am not monetized. I've been doing this for a long time. I do it for free. I do it because I love, um, I love people and I love the earth and I love God. So praise be to God for providing me with the herbs and the knowledge to share with all of you. So anyways, um, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Maybe hopefully one day um, I'll get monetized, but if I don't, like at least what I'm doing matters. Well, I mean, it matters to me and hopefully it's helping you out there somewhere. All right, have a great day. Bye.